Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to be starting a new series called What if Android 21 was canon? Now since we're making Android 21 canon here, I'm going to be changing up our origin story from what it was in Fighters. And with all of that out of the way, we can begin. We start off with Dr. Jiro in his lab, creating androids to one day kill Son Goku. He has even partially made himself into an android. And all is going fighting up until the fight against the Saiyans. Through spy robots, he is able to see how powerful these Saiyans truly are, especially in the fight between Goku and the Prince of All Saiyans, Vegeta. And most of the other Z fighters who we didn't think much of before has surpassed Goku's brother within just a year. The same person who is easily knocking around Earth's two most powerful fighters at the time. This is not good, they should not have grown this fast within just one year according to his calculations. By the time he plans to release the androids, would it even be enough? He begins looking over footage at the fight against the Saiyans, and then he hears some interesting dialogue sent by one of the Saiyans. The one go my name, Vegeta, constantly devoted that the Saiyans are the most powerful fighting race in the universe. And after examining more footage, Jiro found out that Vegeta was born with the power he currently has, making him believe Vegeta's statement is true. This makes Jiro think to himself, instead of turning humans into androids, why shouldn't he turn Saiyans into androids? But he can't do that because there are little to no Saiyan specimens he can use. The only possible subject he can think of is Goku's son Gohan. But all the commotion caused by him trying to kidnap Gohan could allow all the other Z fighters to his location and his plan once and for all. So then he thinks of the next best thing, why not create a bio android with the DNA of multiple Saiyans? Yes, it's a perfect plan, he can get DNA from Goku and Vegeta and the other Saiyan that Vegeta killed. Hey, why stop at Saiyans? He can get Pickles DNA, not only giving the person his techniques, but giving them Pickles biology, which is great in a battle. Maybe he can give them DNA of some of the human fighters, as their techniques are very impressive. Now the problem is, Jiro doesn't know if it would be a good idea to create an organism from the ground up composed of this DNA. So instead of creating one, he will need to find a specimen. A young woman from West City has just graduated university with perfect scores. And right now, she's looking for a job, but she doesn't want any normal job. She doesn't want to join some big company and just be another one of their employees for decades to come. She wants to join some small company that she sees potential in. And one day while walking around West City, she sees a flyer for something that she's exactly looking for. A small company that has potential and is looking for employers. So she takes a picture of the flyer and follows the coordinates where it said the company was. So she goes to where the coordinates said for her to go, but she ends up moving a rocky wasteland instead. She checks to see if she's in the right location, but on with her, she is in the right location, or someone else. Jiro have knocked out the young lady and put her inside a test tube for him to conduct his experiments on. At first, things going fine. Jiro was successfully able to combine DNA with the young lady and she didn't die from it. But much like the other androids, he tried programming her to kill Son Goku. And this has mixed results. It's like she has developed dual personalities, as the original human consciousness and Jiro's program consciousness are clashing over one body. Sure, she is really strong. By this point, she has far surpassed Earth's powerful warrior, Eris Erisine, Great Ape Vegeta. But there is no telling what she would do when she completes her mission of killing Goku. So Jiro eventually decides to scrap the whole project, in which he deemed Android 21 a failure. So in order to ensure his safety, Jiro put the test tube containing Android 21 in a cave mile below Jiro's own lab and puts her in the care of a supercomputer and using what he learned from biogenetic engineering by making Android 21 he created a new project in which he calls Cell and Jiro has deducted that a grown organism from the ground up is safer than using a vessel but Jiro's days of research eventually come to an end as as he releases Android 17 and 18 he is killed by Android 17 now after this everyone thought that Jiro's days of making androids were put to an end but unknown to them, there is a supercomputer way below Dr. Drew's lab still cutting DNA samples for Android 21. And over the years, this computer has collected a lot of DNA samples. Pickle, post Kame Fusion, Future Trunks, Perfect Cell, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, Super Saiyan 2 Majin Vegeta, Debora, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, Ultimate Gohan, and most terrifyingly of all, Kid Buu which replaces Pickle in being the main biological vessel for Android 21, but in the process, making her unstable mind even more unstable. Three years after the death of Kid Buu, in a lab, far below Jiro's own lab, 
the most deadliest creature the universe has ever seen is released, Android 21. When she emerges from her test tube, she tries a membrane where she is or who she is. She walks on the lab for a bit, trying to see if she can find any evidence on who she is. The only thing she finds are blueprints for a project named Android 21 with an outline of someone who looks like her on it. And after reading a bit more, she can't believe what she's reading. She is a bio-android made in the lab? No, no, this can't be right. Maybe she can find more answers outside the lab. When she's outside the lab, things start to get a little bit more difficult for her. She hears so many different voices in her head, each one telling her to do different things. But she constantly feels like she's holding something back. It's like something inside her body is one out of her. But she's feeling stuff which she can only describe as sense and large energies. And it feels like one of those energies is coming straight towards her. Ego lands in front of 21 and is immediately hostile and begins asking her a whole bunch of questions. Quinnell looks up at Pekko. She feels like she knows this person, but aware she's never met him in his life. The only question she can answer Pekko is that she thinks her name is Android 21 or something like that. She doesn't know. She can't remember anything. Ego calms down a bit after hearing her situation. This is definitely a bio android like cell, but she's not evil for some reason. Even though he can sense a bunch of evil and familiar energy coming off of her, Echo says to her that it does not affect her situation, but he does know one person might be able to do something Bulma. Echo takes 21 to Bulma's lab, and after taking a few blood samples, Bulma is in disbelief. How can a human vessel be composed of so much different DNA and still be alive? What's normal procedure is a nervous Vegeta and a curious Trunks. And 21 can't help but getting the same feeling of deja vu with these two as she did with Piccolo, especially with Vegeta. But as this is going on, they hear the echo of Ensign's transmission down the hallway and someone walking closer to them. Goku enters the lab and greets everyone, saying that he sends a powerful new energy and wanted to see who it was. But right she got eyes of Goku, 21 falls to the ground in pain. Most of the voices inside of her head are now turned to do one thing, kill Son Goku. Cell wanted to fulfill his own programming by killing Goku. Majin Vegeta wanted to finish the fight with the person who's embarrassed him for so many years. Duro's own programming trying to take control over her whole body. The last thing she hears is the maniacal laugh of Kid Buu before everything goes to black. 21 stands up, staring directly at Goku. Everything's silent for a bit until 21 gives off a creepy laugh as the whole lab is filled with smoke. When the smoke clears, everyone sees that 21 has transformed into a form that looks incredibly similar to Majin Buu. 21 begins laughing maniacally and begins charging key in her hand as she says, Bye bye Goku, and then launches a massive key explosion. Thankfully, Goku is just able to grab everyone in the lab and teleport them all to Kami's lookout. What was that power? She had already caused the Kid Buu in terms of power, even though she's still suppressed. Before they can think of a proper plan, 21 teleports on top of the lookout, seeing that she always does love in moving targets. Vegeta powers up in Super Saiyan 2, saying to 21 that they have defeated all Joe's creations before, so what makes this any different? Alongside him is Goku, powers up in Super Saiyan 3, saying that with this power, he's even surpassed Majin Buu. 21 begins to laugh maniacally, saying that she always does love playing with her food. Appealing to her childlike personality, Goku says that it'll be no fun if they fight up here, so follow them to a wasteland where they can go all out. In which 21 follows the two to their battleground. Echo knows even Goku and Vegeta are not enough to stop this threat, so they need help from Earth's strongest fighters. Back on the battleground, things are not going well. Vegeta has been taught wrong like he is nothing, and 21 is especially violent towards Goku as he is her target. Eventually, the two receive necessary allies in Pekko, Gotenks, and Gohan. But since Goten, Trunks, or Gohan have not been trained much during this time skip, they are weaker than they are in the Buu Saga. And while the help is welcome, it is not doing much to turn the tide of the fight. Eventually, Yamcha, Krillin, 18, and Tien have all come to join the fight and assist in any way they can. 21 has had the time in her life, so many strong people fighting her, so many strong people she can turn to candy. It's exhilarating. Ultimate Gohan is kicked away by Android 21 and is lying on the ground in pain. He thinks that attack broke his arm. At this point, he's losing hope that they'll win this fight. But just as he is thinking this, he feels a jolt full of energy go through his body and fix his broken arm. Majin Buu has healed Gohan's arm and asks him, why does that lady over there look like him? Gohan says it's a long story, way before even Buu showed up. But to put it simply, a bad guy put a bunch of DNA inside one person, making them very strong. Even with Boo's help, their chance of winning are little to none. 
They have had this much trouble since Superboo absorbed everyone. Wait a minute, Majin Buu? Absorptions? This is Gordon's idea. He asked Majin Buu if he can do that absorption thing that the evil Buu done. Back on the battlefield, everyone's defeated and 21 is relentlessly beating down Goku. And Goku can't do nothing but take it. But as she's doing this, an unlikely person stands up and begins talking to 21. 18 stands up and tries to consolidate with Android 21. She says she knows the pain she's going through right now. She's confused, she's angry, she doesn't know who she is. And if she does not feel like that, then why is she following the orders of the person who gave her that in the first place? 21's smile eventually turns into a blank expression and she just stands there, motionless. And after a while, they sense a difference in her key as her human self takes over. She looks around for a bit, seeing all damage she caused, and eventually, she looks on at the beating Goku. And after looking down at him for a bit, she says one thing. Kill Son Goku. 21's eyes goes black and red again as her other side takes control. After seeing this, Vegeta stands up and begins charging his final attempt at defeating Anakin 21, the final explosion. He doesn't care if it kills him, he's pretty sure he won't even kill Android 21, but goddamn if he's going to die, he's going to go on his own terms. But just as he's about to explode, a figure zooms past him and hits Android 21 so on the head, she is sent flying into a mountain. The figure that kicked away Android 21 lands in front of Goku and he's revealed to be Buhan. He then heals Goku and says to him to sit back on this one, he's got this. 21 is overjoyed after seeing Buhan, such a strong opponent to fight, he'd be a delicious snack after she beats him. But Buhan just lashed on his response, saying that he's going to show this freak what the original really is capable of. The two of them charge towards each other and clash fists, making the whole area shake. As the battle between two margins rages on, Goku stands there, tracking their every movement. If he chooses his movements correctly, he might be able to catch Android 21 off guard and disintegrate her. And after waiting for a bit, he sees the perfect opportunity and teleports right behind Android 21 without noticing and launches with full power Kamehameha. Although the attack doesn't go for her, it does little damage to Android 21 as she just regenerates entry and tailwhips Goku towards the ground. She then says to Buhan how unfair it is that he gets to absorb people and she can't, so let's even the playing field, shall we? A bit of Android 21 crawls up behind Goku and almost absorbs him. But just before it can, Vegeta comes in and kicks Goku out of the way and dodges the attack. He then launches a big battle attack towards a bit of Android 21 and disintegrates it. Using this distraction, Buhan teleports behind Android 21, catching off guard, and then tells her this is how you do a real Kamehameha. As then launches it at full power, and go for Android 21, and seemingly killing her. Looking at the creator just created, Buhan sees chunks of Android 21 heading towards the creator, but instead of pink, they're... purple? And as they look at the newly formed Android 21, it is revealed she has transformed once more. She says to Buhan that it's been the fun, but she's kind of walked up an appetite over all that fighting. Immediately, Buu creates a bunch of kamikaze ghosts and launches them toward Android 21, but he's only used this as a distraction. He then immediately goes over to Goku and Vegeta and heals both of them. He then says, okay, he knows this goes against the whole same pride thing, but they need to fuse, now. He doesn't care how they do it, the Patara, the Dance, the God and the Mech infusion, they need to fuse if they interfere defeat Android 21, and if they don't, they're all going to die. Just as he said this, Android 21 teleports in between them and says to Buhan, it's rude to talk about someone behind their back. Buu screams for her to shut up as he launches a massive barrage of attacks towards her. Goku turns to Vegeta and says, Buu is right, they don't have any Patara, but they can still do a dance. He doesn't care what Vegeta think, they're going to fuse, now. Now at all, how could it resort to this? Buu's in 21's battle has turned the entire area into a volcanic wasteland. Buu's using everything in his arsenal to try and defeat Android 21, but she either counters it or copies his technique and uses it against him. That's not long until Buu's on the ground and 21 has a heel over his chest. 21 begins saying out loud what she should turn Buu into. She can turn to a Crasson, Oh, or she can turn into a cream pie. As she's saying this, Buu's antenna begins going behind him as he says to Android 21, she seems to have forgotten where that technique came from. He then screams turn to chocolate as he launches the candy bean towards Android 21. As she dodges the attack, as it hits a rock behind her, turn down the chocolate as it lands on her hand. 21 then says, yes, chocolate does sound delicious, as she points her candy beam towards Boo. Boo curses to himself, him, Majin Boo, going out like this? Before she launches the attack, a figure teleports behind her and spank it some off of Boo. After seeing her done that attack, Boo says to the person, so they end up pulling it off after all. 
Super Saiyan Gogeta has arrived to the battlefield. Gogeta helps to build the ground and says to him he's got to fight alongside him rather than against him. Now, let's deal with this android once and for all. The two then charge towards Android 21 and deliver a synchronized punch to her face, sending her flying away. 21 charge towards 2, saying that they are really done it this time, but Gogeta dodges the attack and delivers a massive uppercut on Android 21. But then appears on top of Android 21 and launches a Kamehameha, sending her towards the ground. But 21 emerges from the crater and regenerates, calling the two foolish. Her DNA is largely composed of Saiyan DNA and she inherited their ability to get stronger after healing from injury. They simply lack the power to put her down for good. But Gogeta smirks at the hearness, saying that he has power to spare. Gogeta begins powering up, the whole solar system begins to shake, sparks of electricity appear around him, and his hair begins to grow. And as he finishes, Gogeta is revealed to have transformed into Super Saiyan 3. Twilight tries fighting Gogeta, but she's doing little to nothing against him, he just blatantly attacks her attacks. As she finishes to take a breath, Gogeta says to her, It's my turn now. Gogeta retaliates with a devastating combo, each punch shakes the entire earth. But after the combo, 21 stands up and is laughing maniacally. They just don't get it, do they? It doesn't matter how many fusion super scenes or magical absorptions go up against her. She can't be defeated, at this point she's not an android anymore, she is God. But Gogeta laughs in response to this, 21 looks even confused but then Gogeta says to her, she talks so highly for someone who's about to die. Just then, Buhan and a bunch of his tentacles wrap around the Android 21, making it unable to move. But Jesus then lands in front of 21, puts one of his arms up, and begins charging the attack. He says that he's sorry he won't be able to help her, but the least he can do is put her out of her misery. After all she has gone through, Gogeta hopes that the real her will go to heaven and finally be let to rest in peace. But 21 constantly screams him to shut up, there's nothing he can do that will be able to put her down that quickly. But Gogeta looks her in the eye and says one sentence to her, Android 21, meet the Soul Punisher. The attack goes straight through Android 21 as it begins to disintegrate her. 21 screams as a massive explosion goes off that can be visible from space. After that, Gogeta powers down from Super Saiyan and gives a thumbs up to Boo. Boo's body then regenerates as he does a thumbs up as well. Both of their faces drop to one of a concern as they hear what seemingly sounds like a body hitting the ground. 21 is landing on the ground and is back in her normal margin form. She tries weakly standing up but falls over in pain. Boo's face of concern turns into one of a menacing smile as he goes over 21 and goes on one knee and says to her, What look we have here? 21 begs for Boo to help her, but Boo in response just says he always did want to get the final kill on her. He then picks her up by the hair and charges the blast right in her face, right to fire. Before he can fire, Goju's hand lands on Boo's arm as he tells him to stop. You can't be serious, this guy must inherit Goku's stupidity. He knows the Goku side of him likes sparing people, but this girl is pure evil. If they spare her, she'll come back later and kill them all. Goju says that might be in the case before, but now it's different. Boo is confused, but Gogeta just tells him to move. Gogeta goes over 21 and says to her that attack was supposed to destroy all evil inside someone's body. It worked, didn't it? 21 begins to tear up and says, with voice inside of her head, they're gone. She feels normal. She profusely apologizes for everything she's done. She had no control over herself. But Gogeta says it's fine. They have Dragon Balls to fix this mess. Android 21 looks at him confused, but he says he don't think they probably introduced themselves. His name is... His name is Son Goku, but he's pretty sure she already knew that. Now this ends with the fight against Android 21, this will leave off for now.